Mr. Speaker, I'm keen to see who are the members that sign on to the report. It gives you an idea of who's present in these meetings. You will consistently note that actually it's on, almost on or about the same same people, about five or six out of the nine that are members of this committee that do this work. I celebrate those members, uh, Mr. Speaker, and the leadership of uh, Captain Ali Roba, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. This uh, proposal, I'll go straight to the recommendations, Mr. Speaker, because I don't need to uh, repeat many of the brilliant things that have been said by colleagues who have spoken ahead of me, uh, other than to appreciate, uh, Mr. Speaker, that uh, the findings of this uh, committee are quite impressive, that they have been able to pinpoint the exact pressure points for our counties, Mr. Speaker. You know, even without a fight of saying we need to add uh, money here and there, you need to first identify allocations that are already set out in law, that is already specified and said X amount of money go to our counties, like the mineral royalties, uh, Mr. Speaker. It's defined in law uh, already, so there's nothing to fight about. So sometimes you look at bills that come from the National Assembly and you wonder, I know for a fact because I served as Chair of Staff Welfare, Mr. Speaker, that Parliament is made up of perhaps the most competent personnel and human resource you can find in this Republic and even beyond, Mr. Speaker. So what happens when you serve in the National Assembly? Because I know our staff are diligent. When I served in committees, there are many things that, for example, we'd wish to insert into bills, but our clerks, the legal persons uh, that served with us in those committees, they will expressly guide us and help us appreciate that this is outright unconstitutional, this is outright against the provisions of the law. So when you find a reduction to royalties that have already been collected, 1.06 uh, billion, and proposed, and it passes, and that committee that considers this bill has a lawyer, has a legislative drafter, Mr. Speaker, has a clerk who understands all these things. No, I'm not focused on the political class, Mr. Speaker, because I know what happens in committees uh, sometimes, but just thinking through provisions of law that are already set out. Because, Mr. Speaker, and it's important that members appreciate conditional, additional, uh, sorry, uh, what is it called, uh, the bill? The county government's additional allocations bill is a brainchild of this house. About two years ago, that previously we used to do one dora, and you'd have separate divisions for additional allocation. But we felt that it was important, Mr. Speaker, because some of these allocations come midway through the year, that we have a standalone bill that helps uh, Senate and uh, institutions of oversight, Mr. Speaker, to have a more clearer view of both conditional and unconditional grants to our counties, Mr. Speaker, that we felt were getting lost uh, in between uh, the other broader allocations, uh, county government's allocation uh, to our counties, uh, Mr. Speaker, where there was a, a better focus. In fact, Mr. Speaker, pointing out the errors in this bill, the very glaring ones, like the one I've spoken to, justifies the thinking that went into doing a separate bill by the Senate, Mr. Speaker. Because believe you me, if we were still doing one dollar that has uh, both the shareable revenue and the conditional and unconditional allocation, Mr. Speaker, houses, as was the case previously, Mr. Speaker, then it will be difficult to pinpoint some of these errors. But the Senate made a wise decision, a very wise one. And reading through this report, Mr. Speaker, you appreciate actually uh, why it was important for us to have this separate distinction between shareable revenue and this uh, conditional and unconditional grants uh, to our counties, Mr. Speaker, because it is only when we begin to deal with this uh, item by item, you know, Mr. Speaker, that you can point po uh, uh, pinpoint uh, the shortfalls and point out specifically that we passed a law that, for example, set out once we have made a decision that we are setting up um, uh, these uh, community health promoters, for example, Mr. Speaker, it is defined and it is known. It's human resource. These are human beings. They are people with families. They have genuine expectations. They believe that they have a job. They are going around our villages treating. In fact, these community health promoters, Mr. Speaker, much as we do not remunerate them as well as uh, we should, Mr. Speaker, I can give testimony that I know that those that I know in various villages in, in our, uh, our communities, Mr. Speaker, do even more work uh, than some of the medical uh, professionals, uh, Mr. Speaker, because they are visiting the 100 households that were allocated to them. Therefore, because it is already known what their salary is, 
It is already defined what the number of uh, those CHPs are per county. Shouldn't it be rather obvious what their allocation is after factoring all the other uh, uh, additional costs that come with uh, having them at their place of work, Mr. Speaker? And therefore, sometimes, and that is part of the lack of flu uh, fluency in the drafting of some of these bills, Mr. Speaker, that I continue to point out and challenge uh, staffers and members of parliament uh, like you, truly, who serve in these committees, Mr. Speaker, not to make our work so difficult because these are things that are already specified and it, they are known. Therefore, they shouldn't even form a basis for argument because we know what the exact number of these people are.